everybody, it's Christy back with another video. So I have been wanting to talk about some of these things for a while now, but I thought it would be really fun as the weather gets warmer to talk a little bit about my travel supplies for painting. So I'm going to do a couple different videos on this. I definitely want to do one where I show you what's in my whole travel bag. Uh, but for now, the thing that I want to show you is just what I've been using and then something that I grabbed on Amazon recently that I think might be cool that I'm going to try out and some other things that I'm thinking about trying if I need more travel options. But I feel like I have quite a few really good travel options and I just kind of wanted to show you what I do. So first of all, this is a pencil case and I showed this at Inktober time. I got this, I, I, I live near a Vera Bradley outlet <laughs> and I like Vera Bradley. So I purchased this for like $11. It was very inexpensive, but I really like it because I'll show you the inside. I have not even like gone in here to clean this up. It's got two really nice sections. This section over here has some nice little slots. And I, again, I've been like in and out, so I haven't, don't have anything in here. But one thing that I like to keep in there that fit really nicely in those slots are Viviva color sheets. So if you look here, they fit like perfectly in here, which is really, really convenient. And so that's one thing. And then on the other side, sometimes I can put my pens, pencils and things along that line. And then that kind of catches anything that I want to be caught. But yeah, see, we can get a lot of good stuff in and over here. So I'm mainly today, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm mainly here to talk about the watercolor palettes that I kind of keep at my disposal and then show you one other option that I'm gonna unbox today and take a look at. So let's go ahead and just move this out of the way. And this is my, my Stillman and Burn sketchbook. You know, I love those. And let's talk about these guys. And then one more palette. So I bought, let's, let's start with these. Ah, trying to get them off the screen. Okay. I bought these for Inktober and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to give these a try. They, they might work out for me, they might not. I know some people really like the Viviva color sheets, some people don't. Uh, when I first tried them, I wasn't sure that I was going to love them. I thought, you know, they're very pigmented, like I'll just show you in here. They're very pigmented and they are a little bit messy and I really don't buy that there is a half pan worth on every sheet. I haven't tested that. I'm just saying my personal eyeball thinking that is not that. Uh, but having said all of that, I pull these things out and use them all the time. They are definitely ink based. So we're not talking about something with a ton of light fastness. So that you want to keep in mind if you're going to use them. But I find myself grabbing these time and time again. They're so convenient. They're so small. They they're not gonna fall and like ruin anything really because if they fall they're, they're just gonna fall flat shut so these ones that I got for in the Inktober set which are kind of like a fall color palette I I, I use them all the time I, you don't really have to blend because there's so many colors and this set is the metallic set I love the metallic set it's just like the perfect little zhuzh at the end of a painting there's exactly enough different color options in here for you to get the metallic color that you need and then there are two sheets of gold and two sheets of silver which is somewhere yes no oh there they are they're on top there's the sheets of silver they're great I love them and I love having like a little metallic palette that I can take anywhere and that little bag can go anywhere with me it can go in my travel bag it can go in my suitcase it can go in my purse if I just want something quick that I can kind of have with me if I'm going overnight somewhere or I'm going to be outside for a long time. So I do find myself reaching for these so much more than I thought I was going to. You don't need a ton of mixing. Like I said, you don't need a ton of water. So they're kind of great. I bought the spring set and at some point I will unbox that and show it on the channel. And I'm definitely going to add this to my travel situation. The next thing I want to show you is this company I have also featured before. Um, these are palettes from Arts to Embers. Zach uh, from Arts Embers is a wonderful guy. He has worked really hard to make some really cool 3D printed palettes and I just think they're great. This one, 
I'm going to open it up, is my Daniel Smith palette. Whoops! See, I told you I did not prepare for this at all. So they are pretty dry just because it's been pretty dry here this winter. But here's my Daniel Smith paints. And this is my color swatch. Here's my mixing area. So it's so small, but it's so convenient. It's easy. I can... I don't paint with things in my hand. I want to be able to set it down like that on a table. But I do really love that I have all of these color choices in these tiny little wells. Originally, these wells fell out all the time, so I glued them in. But, the, the, I mean, I could easily get the paint out of there if I wanted to replace the paint. I don't. This is my Daniel Smith palette, and it's my travel Daniel Smith palette, and it's great. I recently bought a much bigger version of this palette that I'm not sure what I'm going to put into it yet. I've just been thinking about maybe a little gouache and a little watercolor and it kind of being like a really nice palette that I could keep on my desk while I film videos when I don't have a specific supply in mind. So I don't know. I I, I really like this guy though. I'm going to, I'll link uh, Zach's palettes below from Arts to Embers because I really think they're cool. And then this one I put my KMS watercolors in. So these are my KMS metallics. As you can see, I love to have metallic paint at my disposal. I think it is a lot of fun to work with. And so, I don't know <laughs> what I was doing there. It looks like I had some green and red. That might have been from Arteza time at Christmas. I haven't pulled this out recently. But I can kind of take this anywhere. It fits really nice in this travel palette, but I've used it other places. So, this is another option that I have for metallic paints. It's not quite got the selection that the... Um, the Viva color sheets has this is more of like a metal metallic kind of palette with a little bit of warm and then one blue and one purple thrown in there but it does work out really nicely for me and if I really needed like a green metallic I could take my Daniel Smith green mix it here and then mix it over here so that I wasn't contaminating my Daniel Smith colors at all but these palettes are super affordable um, they're very versatile. He's got so many different options of them. I really need to put some stickers on them. I feel like they're going to look so boss when I have stickers on them. But anyway, I love these for travel. They're so convenient and small. They pack a huge punch. So these are the things I've been using so far. The thing I picked up was this little Winsor and Newton baby. And the reason I bought it is because even if I don't end up loving the Cotman paints, I have Cotman paints. I've used Cotman for a long time. I have no problem at all with Cotman paints, but the palette looks cool. So let's see. I have not opened this yet, so we are about to find out what it really does. Okay, so Winsor & Newton Cotman, Winsor & Newton logo. I think this comes off. Yep. Okay, so this looks to me like it's a little water cup. And then, ooh, okay. Yeah, see, this is what I thought. Comes out, out here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you've got two mixing areas here. You've got 12 paint colors, and it's a really nice split primary with your secondary colors built in. There is a sponge here that's real mashed up, um, but I think it'll be okay once I wet it down. And then this... It's like a teeny tiny travel brush. Let's see if I can figure it out. Yep. Okay, so this is a tiny brush. I, I don't know what I'm gonna actually accomplish with a brush that's this size. I would definitely need more brushes, but that's never a problem for my travel set. I have a, a really nice set of travel brushes that I use, but this is the thing that I think is so cool about this palette. It comes with a little thing you can keep water in. Isn't that neat? So you can like, Keep fresh water in here. We will have to test it and see if it actually stays sealed. But then you put it in here, take it wherever you go, and then you can pour your water so that you have fresh water right here. So this is a pretty neat palette. Um, the Portable Painter palette is similar to this, but I believe that palette is at the cheapest, like 28, 29 bucks. And I got this on Amazon, it was on super sale for $20. So like I said, and that and that portable painter palette doesn't come with paint. This came with paint and was 20 bucks. So it's a seems like a really cool neat option. Um <clears throat> anyway, I got this. It's got 12 paints. If I don't like these paints, 
I will simply replace them because this is just a, let me pull over here and see if, it, let me take the sponge out. Okay, here we go. Can I get in there and get, I don't want to break something, you know. Well, you guys, I haven't been on YouTube that long, but anybody that knows me in real life knows I am prone to breaking something. Okay, it looks like I can probably slide. Yeah, so see if I can get a good angle with this. Do you see how they just kind of slide in and out of there? I imagine if I worked at it hard enough and then had the right hand grip strength under here, you could get those out and then we could replace them with something else. That doesn't seem like it would be a problem to me. It seems pretty sturdy, like it wouldn't just break too easily. There is a little, oops, this has to go a specific way. Um, there is a little ring on the back. So like if you are somebody that wants to hold your palette, let's see how that feels. Spoiler alert, this isn't me. I don't particularly like to hold my palette. And this is so neat that the little water bottle actually is also a mixing well. So you could also use it for mixing. And maybe even you pull this out and you could have like mixing here and you could do like, well no, there's a big space there so you couldn't do dirty paint water there, I was gonna say. Maybe you could do that, but still, this is pretty, this is pretty boss. I don't really do the whole ring hand thing, that's not for me, but, but this looks pretty neat. So, anyway, I'm gonna add this to my travel bag. We're gonna travel here for a few different things in the next couple of months. And I will kind of maybe do an update mid-summer and tell you what I'm thinking. If I like this, if I've decided to use something else. But what do you look for in a travel paint palette? And have you found something that I haven't showcased here that you think is pretty cool? Let me know in the comments below. And do you guys want to see my travel bag? I think I am going to do a video where I show off all the things I keep in my extended travel bag versus my little one here. So once again, we find it. That's everything that I keep in. So I guess let's put them all in here. So here's my bag. And if I were to load it up, I would put my Viviva color sheets here. And there's plenty of room for me to fit a third right in there. And then in here, I would put, these are paint brushes. I'm gonna grab all my pens and markers out of here. This is my Mobius and Rupert. I like to have that in there. My supplies from a, these are from a paper gang box, if you guys know what that is. So I could easily fit all of this in here and my brushes on this side. Zip that up. And these could easily go over here on this side. And then my paint, this is another, um, sorry, I didn't show you what this is. This is the Kum Ellipse pencil sharpener. It's like the best tiny little pencil sharpener. I have a bunch of them. I keep them all over my house, but it's always nice to have one in there. So yeah, this all fits in there like super easy, super nice. I still have room. I could easily fit another smaller sketchbook in here. I probably, oh, I had, I had this in there. And my kneaded eraser needs to go back in there too. So I'll stick that right down in there. And yeah, easily fits all of this. So I have a ton of different paint palettes in there. I could even put them in a smaller container if I wanted to. But like I said, I got this on, it was, at the outlet, it was on clearance on top of being at the outlet. So it was like 70 or 80% off the price. I don't know if it was just they're going, like this type of bag is going out of style or whatever, but I couldn't resist it. I thought it would be nice for art and I have used the heck out of it. I know it looks brand new, but I really have since I bought it six or seven months ago. It literally doesn't leave my bag, any bag that I have. So I'm going to grab some stuff out of here and I'll just sit and we'll do a let's paint and then that'll be it for today. So hopefully you enjoyed this and if you want to know more about what I have been using in traveling and not traveling and art organization, 
I've got plenty more to show you from there. So I hope you enjoy this piece. Okay, so let me clean this off here again because I just, um, I had a failed experiment here with the rose. 
I just wanted to play with the paints a little bit and kind of see how this setup works, tell you what I think about colors, etc. Uh, I'm no stranger to Cotman paints. I've used them now for quite a few years and I do enjoy them a ton. The split primary palette's really nice. This alizarin crimson is a little bit, um, it, it's a nice cool red. I do prefer having a permanent rose. And let's see what else. I really like both of these neutrals. The neutral palette's really good, except I have no use for Chinese white. I can pull this like pigment right out of the pan. So I'm thinking about making a couple of adjustments. The other thing that I can do here, because the sponge really doesn't fit in here well, and it's a nice sponge, but I'll probably just take it and dry it out and either, if I was using this palette, I might even throw it like down in here so that it would be in here for my brush to catch water on or a similar kind of paint cup because I usually travel with a couple paint cups. I am not quite outdoorsy enough to like be painting on a boat or something like that yet. So we'll see what happens with that. But <clears throat> I don't have a use for Chinese white so I'll probably pull that out and fill that with white gouache so that I have a white gouache in this palette. I can also put two more half pans in here. They fit. I can fit at least two more in and right now you see that? Here, let me move my hands and they move a lot. Now granted, if that uh, sponge was in there, they might not move nearly as much. So I'm probably going to put two half pans in here. I'm probably going to buy a permanent rose and a hooker's green dark. I think those are probably the two paints I'm missing the most in this palette. I could get a pretty good uh, mauve, mauve color here, mauve, mauve, I don't know how you say it, from these two and if I had a permanent rose I would have even bigger of a spectrum for that direction. I don't really find that I need an orange because this cad red is real good. Um, it's a hue, cad red hue, and then this is cad orange. So between those two, as much as I, like if I was going to paint a pumpkin, plus the burnt sienna has got some real nice orange notes. So I would be fine for orange, but I am hurting for green. So I need at least one more green, I think, to really make this palette exactly how I'd want. So I think I'm going to probably take this out and put white gouache in there. And then I would put a hooker's green and a, what did I say, permanent rose would be the two colors that I would add. And that would really round this palette out nicely. This was a failed experiment for a rose. <laughs> I, I didn't think and I dabbed it with the... Uh, sponge and it totally just blotted everything out. So other than that though, um, this is the Stillman and Burn cold press uh, mixed media paper. So I knew it wasn't going to give me like beautiful loose florals. It's just not the paper for it. But overall, I had a ton of fun here playing. I feel like the paint went down really nice. Like I said, everything worked really nicely. The one test that I wanted to do that I didn't do yet that does not involve the paint is this little guy. So I filled it with water. And whenever I filled it with water here, I figured I'd bring, this is a, wet, a dry paper towel, and I am going to just shake this upside down to see if I get any water out. Okay, I feel like that was a pretty good test, and if it was going to come loose, it would have by now. So this thing is good. I am not somebody who is delicate. <laughs> It's the nice way to say it. So I need something that is going to not get water everywhere. This does not get water everywhere. So this is pretty, pretty baller. Like if I put it in there, I feel like it's pretty good. I will probably not leave it with water in it all the time unless I'm going to use it, but that's pretty cool. The other option that I always use for water are these little guys, but they, they will, let's see if this one's going to leak it all on me. So this one didn't leak too too much at all, and it's got the nice sturdy cap. It's just one of those like crystal light type bottles. But if I squeeze it too hard, this area here, you'll see a little bit of water leaking. Maybe not. It's going to make a liar out of me. It's going to make a liar out of me now. But um, these are pretty good. I don't have any trouble with these leaking on me ever, so these are nice to have in a, in a bag. But that is really cool. So overall, I really liked this. I think it will be a really good addition to my travel palette and my travel bag. 
Uh, tell me what you think. I'm going to drop an Amazon link below. I don't have Amazon affiliate links or anything like that. I just bought this and really like it. And I wanted to share because I thought it was pretty cool and pretty good deal for what it was. So hopefully you're going to take your paints now that the weather's getting nice. And go paint outside. I love to go paint outside. So that's going to be it for me today. I hope that you got something out of this video and that hopefully it inspired you to create some artsy bits yourself. Have a great day, everybody. Bye for now.